Hello, welcome to the behind the scenes for Connects Rainbow Road. Uh, I just, I'm doing a completely different format for behind the scenes this time around because this track was designed very differently than most of my other tracks for a lot of reasons. Um, so let's jump into it. So with this track, I had several goals and here's some of the goals I had. One, I wanted to be different from any other Rainbow Road that currently exists. Two, I wanted it to be all in one piece. Three, I wanted to do double dash. Four, I wanted to have a gliding section in somewhere within the track. And five was that the carts would be able to handle it, meaning that it would need to all be downhill since my cart batteries are dying. I'm gonna give you a big hint right here. Never leave batteries in your carts if you are not using them. They will destroy the motors. Don't learn from me. Don't make that. Don't don't make that. Don't make that mistake, because it'll cost you. <laughs> Our initial goal was to make sure that this is different than any other track. So I, one of the ideas I had is I actually kind of went to the arcade version of Mario Kart that has some ideas in there that actually are really unique that you don't see in any other Mario Kart game. Um, where like you have wormholes and such. Like the one of the early versions of the track actually had wormholes where you would like go through you go through one portal and you end up over here and you kind of be like dying around you have a whole bunch of anti-gravity stuff but we ended up scrapping it to make it easier to do in one piece um the initial concept of this track was um the rainbow road among clouds and beanstalks which you kind of see um in um the arcade version or in the rainbow cup one of the one of the races you go to this dimension that had it's a cloudy dimension with beanstalks and it's kind of one of the initial ideas I ended up evolving this idea and making it so that the track was on top of a mountain and you weave in and around clouds and the mountain and eventually the beanstalks kind of got filtered out and replaced with mushrooms which is meant to be a callback to my very first video mushroom gorge so when we decided to put everything in one piece um, it kind of helped streamline how everything else needed to be because that meant that the Rainbow Road itself needed to be really compact. And then combined with the fact that we wanted to do Double Dash, it really kind of helped guide what we want the track to look like. The general track design is designed kind of from a, the perspective of an actual Mario Kart track. Um, we have fences and such to be able to... Um, you can throw items off of and such. Not only that, but fences kind of disappear at parts where you need to be able to have full control of your cart. As a Rainbow Road, as this is typically the final track you get to play, you typically have to play every other track on the game before you play Rainbow Road. Well, at least in like Double Dash standards. This track needs to be able to challenge the player's ability to control their cart, and it brings it down to the most basic things. Which is the main reason why I actually didn't include any obstacles, even though other Rainbow Roads have actually included them before. The initial version of this track had a whole lot of jumps, and my experience with Double Dash and like trying to film that is that jumps are not good for Double Dash because you will lose your racers almost every single time you go off a jump. What the hell? Oh, no. He's giving up on life. <laughs> um, and being able to like having all my friends around here, we kept making a joke that um, Potato King Kai kept falling off the cart and they had a bad grip because Mario kept falling off and we had a we had a little thing where all the racers were based on just people in my friend group. Um, most of them actually were able to come help film with the exception of I think two. It, it was awesome. Normally what I do with building is I'll build the tr I'll build like the base track and then I'll add stuff to it as we finish different side projects. That's the way I prefer to do stuff but this track, we didn't really have that as an option, so we ended up having to build everything individually so that we could throw it all together in a quick amount of time. We did a couple things differently than other Rainbow Roads with this. The Rainbow track for this was actually done in very large strips rather than each individual track piece. Initially, that's what we would do, as it was a lot easier and a lot less work in regards to coloring and all the track and all that but with this that actually turned into a huge plus i got um a whole bunch of my friends thank you so much to ada potato potato king kai and sword jedi 
they were a huge help in um, just getting the rainbow track done because uh, it would have taken me a lot longer to do it by myself. And in regards to the rainbow world, I kind of wanted to jump back to my very first point with how I wanted to be different. So I thought, okay, what can I do with this rainbow to make it different than the other rainbow tracks? Like, you might notice that there's some rainbow tracks that are relatively similar, like some fall with the track, some kind of fade as you go. Um, some, like you have, like you have the tiled ones of some of the more recent ones. This one I had the idea of, what if the rainbow road was made out of stars? Which is where I kind of got some of the idea for the little lore intro you get. Um, thanks to Bugs Dragon for that, by the way. So, what we ended up doing is we traced a track, and then what we did is we traced, we got uh, two cookie cutters, um, one big, one small, and we just traced stars throughout the entire track, and we filled in a rainbow with everything that wasn't, that wasn't specifically part of those, that wasn't inside the stars. And then we had, we went through a couple different drafts of what we could possibly do. Like we thought about filling them with yellow, and such. But we ended up just leaving them white. And what we did is we got um, highlighter, and we actually just highlighted the very outside of the star um, with just different colors. And it actually turned out really good. It looks cool. Uh, we were kind of worried that it wouldn't stand out enough, but it actually stands out pretty well. That turned out really well, and then I went and got uh, the lights. So this is actually the second track I've done lights for. Uh, the first one was actually Christmas True Way, believe it or not, which was ages ago. And it's kind of funny to me that we never considered using Christmas lights ever again. Um, until now. But instead, I went and got like almost 200 feet of rainbow fairy lights. And we lined the entire track. Because um, the, the difference between fairy lights and Christmas lights is that Fairy lights are on like a copper wire, which makes them really easy to wrap around stuff. It's super thin, and it's really just perfect for what we were going for. And the fact that I was able to get 200 feet for $40 is actually pretty nice. So one of the things about the setting of this track is it's on a mountain um, among the starry sky. And I imagine that if you were in-game, you'd be able to look down and you'd be able to see like mountains, rivers, you might see like village off in the distance or something that's kind of what I imagine um, and we were trying to figure out how do we want it to be in the sky because we want to show it's in the sky but we can't show the ground because that's just too much work um, and that's just a lot of editing work that's really hard to make look good so initially we were considering having the whole the bottom part of the we were have the thing of covering the entire floor with fiber fill but after some thought, we actually decided to go with it, what we did for GBA Rainbow Road and just kind of have black with different patches. And it actually ended up being way better. Because one, it made it a lot easier to show off fireworks, but also the black curtain actually absorbs the color from the lights, which means that the only thing that's reflecting the light is actually the track itself, which makes the track look like it's glowing. Which is actually just what we wanted to go for with the idea of the track. So filming this track was done in like a couple phases. Um, so we first started with all the stop motion stuff. We wanted to make sure that was done. That way I could also throw it all in the editor. That way I could kind of make a roadmap for what um, was needed for everything else. That way I could make sure we had everything. Just kind of save a bit of time later. Um, so initially we did all the stop motion. That was day one. Day one we did just stop motion um, and then day two was when we did all all the live action stuff <laughs> we weren't very on task at all uh, we were a bunch of goofs um, I have a uh, we were just like listening to music and doing it we're all just goofing around <laughs> <laughs> I'm operating this as like a movie would if everyone was off task it, it, it was a mess but it was we we got it done um after that i went and made sure i i, I went and got everything in the editor kind of created like a rough draft and then um when we got everything we needed from the main track we took the main track down and we actually built a small subsection for the tunnel 
There's a tunnel on me wanting to take another part from the arcade game and kind of do like a wormhole thing. It didn't, it was a bit hard to kind of get the whole wormhole effect, so I kind of used it mostly with camera shots. Green screen, when there's rainbow lights in, doesn't work. <laughs> you can't really use any color to green screen or blue screen or red screen or anything you're trying to do. It won't work because all the colors of the rainbow are there. Tried that, and honestly, I like how it ended up turning out. And we just used some clever camera angles and such to make it look like they're going through a giant, like, rainbow tunnel. Um, and I imagine that if you were in an actual Mark Kart game, there'd be, like, boost panels and such, you'd be able to go in between doing that. So, post production or uh, editing, um, when mostly like some of my other tracks, um, I'll typically just kind of go through the race sort of linearly and grab clips as needed throw them in. I uh, used all the items, item scenes as anchors so that I can make sure that there's like a, a general flow of where like where someone's position in the race is at any given time you can kind of get an idea of that. Yeah, um, the big thing was the final lap. The final lap I really wanted to make sure it was special and um, there are several remixes for Mario Kart 64's Rainbow Road where it'll fade into the Mario Kart 64 credits. I really like that concept, and I've always really liked that, um, I always like that credits theme, so I kind of thought, hey, why don't we throw it in? Uh, and I found one that really worked, and the really cool thing about it, about having a credits scene as the final, as, like, the final lap, is one, it actually breaks one of the fundamental rules of Mario Kart of, you don't, this track doesn't have a sped up version of the main, the main track theme. But this is just so much better. It adds a real sense of finality to the track. It's the last track of the last cup, and, and this it's um, the finale. This track is the fin is my finale, and I I'm here doing it because like I don't fully know what my future is gonna be like, and if I'm not able to continue doing connect tracks in the future, I want this here so that my opportunity of doing a finale is not taken away from me. <laughs> Because I like doing finales, and I like to end things on on a high note. You cross the starting line um, and start the third lap. I just want to like, all right, not holding back anymore. You just gotta gotta go for it, and just really just drill on the finale of this track. And a little thing I did in post actually is that um, if you 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 may have noticed it, but. All the footage is actually slowed down by about 60% uh, to match the pacing of the song. Uh, the song that plays um, to be able to just kind of let you take in the track one final time before we wrap up. Um, and this track was an epic finale, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, However, before we go, I want to talk about a little concept that actually almost happened, but didn't end up happening because I, because of the move to building in my place, and also um, due to lack of connects, connects pieces, believe it or not. Um, the original plan for the track, I, I, I was considering just leaving this up, but I'm bringing it up because you guys kind of need to know about this, and that was actually considered, and it would have been really cool if it worked. We were considering suspending the track in the air with fishing line, and it would have been really sick, but also really janky. Um, what we were gonna do, because my friend uh, Stindlin has some engineering experience, we were going to create a scaffolding that we would have scaffolding above, scaffolding below, and you have the track in the middle, like being held tight by it from the top and bottom. And it's like it's theoretically possible. You just have to, like, crazily reinforce the track. Um, and I don't have enough connects for that, unfortunately. It would have been cool, though. I wanted to bring that up, because even when this track may have looked perfect, like, it may have be like, oh my gosh, this is, like, the most perfect track. There's always room for improvement. So, yeah. And if I'm able to come back, I'm going to see if I can keep pushing the limits of what's possible. And even without that, this track turned out better than I thought it would. And I am really happy with it. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Peace.